What's up everyone, my name is David Arroyo and in this video we're going to be talking about using Blender for comics. This is the second part uh, of the series and the last one. Uh, in this one we're going to be talking about how to further integrate Blender into the comic process. So in the first video we looked at using Blender as reference only and then we draw over it. In this case we're going to revisit that for a tiny little bit and then we're going to look at other ways of using Blender and even one example where we only use Blender. So, I suggest we dive immediately right in and then we look at what we got uh, to cover. Okay, so what we can see right here is that we have four different types of comics that I've made myself. And I've done them, uh, three of them with Blender and one traditional, as you can see right here. Now, the traditional one uh, is where you need a lot of drawing skill. Then when we move on to the Blender one, you also need a lot of drawing skill, but it helps a lot because you use Blender as a reference in this case. So only the basic shapes that you can then work over or draw over. Then you've got a mix between Blender and Photoshop or your um, drawing app of choice uh, where you render out scenes, but you draw over them at the same time. And then Blender, the last style is purely within Blender, where you combine freestyle and grease pencil. You do not uh, get out of the Blender ecosystem. You just do everything inside of it. So that gives you a lot of control at the same time. Right, so we're gonna start focusing first on the traditional way of doing this. So this is without Blender. Uh, I added this part just to show you guys the difference between uh, what happens when someone works uh, traditionally and when they work with Blender. Now. Don't forget, and this is a page out of my own webcomic uh, from the Reset Universe, um, but what, what I mean by traditional, because obviously you have traditional, which really does mean traditional, like without digital tools. But in this case, when I say traditional, I mean the traditional way of doing things without 3D. So it's still digital. It's not a traditional way with actual paper and pencils and ink. You still do everything uh, digitally but without uh, 3D, and I still consider that the traditional way of doing things. So here you can see the entire page, and uh, here you can see how, for example, it requires a lot of prepping, okay? So here you've got the colored storyboards on the left, and the almost finished page on the right. Uh, in the traditional way of working, you really do need drawing skills in order to get things looking like this. Uh, and you can play a lot with colors and all these are done digitally within a painting app like uh, Photoshop or Procreate. Then the other style that we're gonna focus on is Blender as reference. And here what basically happens is that you use Blender uh, just for reference you're gonna draw over it. So this is a shot that I showed uh, about a month ago in my previous video. And here you can see the shot that I created within Blender. So I didn't add any colors. I didn't go the extra mile. I just created the 3D setup so that I can draw over it. And here there was a video of this uh, in um, Procreate uh, in the previous video. Now here you can see how I've done it decently, which means the way it's normally done where you do flats and then followed up by, you know, some basic colors. Uh, and then once you've got that under control, in my case, I decided to add a painterly feel to it, some more details, um, then obviously the text. And this is normally what happens within traditional, um, like comic book, um, like professional environments, okay? So they they go that extra mile and it takes a lot of time. But it's very useful to have that blender as reference because you've got the perspective for free and it really works. Then the next one uh, is where you decide to use Blender and Photoshop as one and the same, um, well, as, 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 a, as a combination of two things. So for example, here you can see what I've achieved combined and it all started with me building this uh, apartment in 3D in Blender. And I did some concept art on this last year. I also did a video on this where you can see these are some ideas that I'm sketching out, doing some colors. And then one of these, uh, I decided to really block out in Blender with colors, uh, add textures to it. These are all procedural textures that I made myself. I placed a puppet there for reference. 
so that I knew how tall I had to draw him. And then eventually uh, I ended up drawing uh, like this with making some modifications. This was done in Procreate, which I will show you guys a video of uh, right now so that you can see exactly how it was done. So into Procreate, basically uh, I imported the original render with the um, size for that guy for reference so that I knew how tall I had to draw my uh, character and then as you can see here it's basically just drawing on a separate layer first in pencils and then eventually once you got the pencils right you go over to ink you add in your colors uh, you do your lighting your shading um, you know add the shadows calculate all that stuff and then work from there add some details get the lighting right, get the levels right so that it pops even more. And then uh, the final uh, finish uh, where I go over it uh, and you know really polish the image to a nice uh, degree. Then we have the last one and that's the Blender Freestyle and Grease Pencil. So this is completely done within Blender. Um, obviously this also requires you to have some drawing skills, but uh, let's have a look. So this was the render that I did in Eevee. This was the one in Cycles Engine. Same setup, just a different engine. Uh, here you can see, for example, how you take out the different passes which are uh, possible to do now in Eevee. So you have the color pass, you have here the freestyle line render pass separately, you have the shadow pass, for example, and this is very, very powerful because you can combine these in Photoshop or whatever and play with these passes to get the desired effects. Here you can see then again what the final result was within um, Blender. Let's have a look how it was done. Okay, so this is the file that we're going to be looking at. Uh, it combines 3D, okay, 3D geometry, and it combines, um, well, and it uses um, the grease pencil. Okay, so these were done in the grease pencil. Here you can see geometry, grease pencil right there. And we'll have a very quick look how this was done. Um, so let's start maybe with, let me put it down to no shading. And remember that I was talking about uh, these assets that I have. In the previous video, you can see them. Uh, you have all these assets here that I've built. Uh, and these assets, they are basically walls and so forth that if I click on them and you see the green lines, it's because they're made uh, ready for freestyle line rendering. Okay, so that I have all the lines ready. Uh, it's the same with these um, bricks right here. And it's the same with all kinds of stuff. I've got a whole bunch of stuff like this where you can set them up just like you have here. And if I were to turn on test ground here, then you can see other tests that I've got set up here uh, also made with all these things, kind of like you would do in a game engine like Unreal Engine or stuff like that. You know, you just uh, have your assets, you put them together and you create uh, like cool looking street or whatever you need. Now for this demo, I decided to focus on this street right here, right? So for this, I'm going to uh, deactivate the asset library and I'm quickly going to turn on uh, shading again. Okay, so we are back in shading. You can see um, all these assets that I used. Well, I gave them colors as well. Uh, and because of that, we also have a light, of course, a light source. If I were to take this one out, let's see. And, you know, very different scenario, of course, uh, very different setup. Um, so as you can see, and let's go through the camera. And this is the shot that I used. Uh, let me take out the grease pencil, guys. Let me see. There we go. So this was the uh, shot that I started off with. And then afterwards, I thought to myself, OK, you know, this I can render out with freestyle line renders and also um, lighting, colors, everything I want, just like in the previous example uh, of using um, Blender for comics. And but the one thing that I hadn't done yet was adding grease pencil to it. And the thing that I like about that is that you can move these guys uh, from wherever they're standing. OK, so you can really play around with the idea of where you want these guys. Um, and I think that's quite important because it gives you quite some some power, basically. If I were to turn this off for two seconds um, and I were to move this guy, see, you can basically place them in 3D anywhere. Um, 
and it still works you can rotate the guy if I were to rotate him uh, let me see whoops I think I got the wrong thing selected it's easier when you do that there we go we've got him and then uh, we rotate him very quickly it's easier to see like this uh, see you can rotate him um, obviously it's a flat image so it's never going to create you know very believable uh, angles if you tilt him a bit in a funny way but it's quite interesting nonetheless and then you've got let me just quickly select that one as well and same here this one uh, I've got the light activated so he will react to the light if he goes here he will be less uh, I mean less well lit than over here um, so to show that we can go to actually let me just actually turn off wireframe it's almost easier there you go and you only have this right what I did uh, I focused basically on this guy this is the guy that I made I made him here um, next to where is this dude there you go I had one of these guys here and I decided to draw this guy with the uh, grease pencil quite simple uh, when you look at it so you've got your layers okay which you can see so this is the pencil layer uh, which is not visible right now you've got your shadows which I put to a multiply and just one color just like I would do uh, if I were to go here see shadows just one color so you set up basically here your materials yeah where I've got my black ink my sweater sweater two. cool thing about this is that at any point in time I can change these colors and say like well actually I wanted it to be green or I want it to be red or you know any of these things and guess what this will update on the guys over there as well so that's quite nice I mean it, it gives you a lot of control um, I mean this was just a very quick test but it's it's a nice little thing and the renders are quite fast as well now talking about renders uh, because this is a bit of a challenge and I will see if I've got the right setup here um, let's see I believe so but it's gonna show you an error and this is what I wanted to show you as well so let's quickly try to render this um, let's see if it works give it a little bit of time but it goes quite fast I mean this is in real time so you can see that and plus I'm recording the screen plus all these things uh, see this is the they're basically rendered on two different layers okay so this one and the other one uh, and then normally they get composited over each other again okay but this is what happens so I've got my freestyle line renders okay which are there but I end up with a funny little cutout here um, now this can be fixed okay and um, it, the fix is it's a bit of a <laughs> complicated fit well complicated if you know what you're doing it's not complicated but the thing is I'm not gonna dedicate the time in this video to do that instead I'm gonna forward you in the uh, descriptions below of the video to a link of someone that is an expert at this and that person is Paul okay you'll see him um, in the uh, video I'll forward you to his uh, like YouTube channel and you can see how to fix this okay um, but there is a fix for it but I did want to show you that the thing with uh, this style um, because it has tremendous potential and I'm very interested in in working uh, in this way but it also requires a little bit of technical know-how and a bit of uh, investment and so forth okay so you you will just know that it's an extremely interesting um, way of working and you can get a lot done in a short amount of time uh, because you know your, your colors are done your um, your renders you know you I mean you do so much here already uh, so you really get quite a lot out of it um, but as you can see if I were to go over and see my freestyle is going over the well here it, maybe because it's turned off but in the render basically what happens is that the freestyle goes over the uh, lines and there's a way to fix it uh, and like I said on Paul's uh, YouTube channel you'll be able to view that so like I said in the descriptions below you'll be able to see that um, 
But this was number three, the one that I really wanted to show, uh, where you can really see just by using different materials, like you can see here, okay, using your materials and so forth, you can basically create whatever you need to create um, and really have very, very interesting uh, shots. So there you go. That's just the, quickly the setup that I wanted to show you. Like I said, this is not a tutorial. Uh, I'm not teaching you how to use the grease pencil in this video, but just to give you an idea of what you can do with this thing. Right. Let's move on. And so there you have it. As you have seen, there are four different ways that I've shown you. Of course, there are many more, but these ones that we cover are the traditional way of doing things, which doesn't require Blender. It just needs, you just need to draw well. Blender is reference where you use the reference and then draw over it. Then where you actually uh, render out the background, for example, and do the characters uh, in Photoshop or Procreate. And then the last one where you use Blender Freestyle and Grease Pencil, everything in Blender. So there you go. There are many ways of using Blender for comics. I strongly recommend that you guys give them a try and see which one works best for you. And of course, for the kind of comic book project that you're currently working on. And so there you have it. That's what I have for you guys uh, regarding using Blender for comics. I hope that you guys like this type of content. I hope it has inspired you to make your own comics using Blender. And as usual, you can always leave a like and subscribe. And then we will see you guys in the next one. Take care, guys.